Howard Wasden is a decorated combat veteran, a former U.S. Navy SEAL, a recipient of the Silver, Silver, Silver Star and Purple Heart, and a hero of the battle at Mogadishu, which inspired the movie Black Hawk Down. Take a look. I was lying in a ditch in Mogadishu, Somalia, with my leg nearly blown off. The battle, later known as Black Hawk Down, raged all around me. Two American helicopters were down. Enemy fighters were everywhere and advancing on me. I'd been shot three times, was weak from blood loss, and almost out of ammunition. Howard Wasden is also the co-author of the best-selling book, SEAL Team 6, and he is also a chiropractor. We'll get to more of that later. Howard, welcome to the 700 Club. Good to meet you. Thank you, Andy. Good to be here. Love your book. What was going through your mind that day in Mogadishu? You know, it pains me to admit this, but I had gotten to the point in my life where I thought I was more than human. I was so totally self-supportive, didn't need God or anybody else. Wow. I thought I was God's gift to tactical warfare. I'd been in battles training accidents where buddies had been hurt and killed, and I'd never gotten a scratch. Never gotten a scratch, but this time, now your right leg is hanging on by threads of flesh. Yes. Uh, you're begging the doctors not to amputate. They reluctantly uh, agree not to at first. How difficult, Howard, was your recovery? You know, the physical recovery, I almost died from a um, staph infection. Um, I had to go to daily deep readings where they scrub out the uh, necrotic tissue. But that, that recovery wasn't near as bad as the mental recovery, the mental war that I was fighting with myself, the, uh, the post-traumatic stress that I didn't know I had. Because you had come home from the battle, uh, you know, over there you were a hero, you'd sort of come back, your wife is sort of estranged from you with, when you're feeling vulnerable, uh, and you say you, you were losing the, the battle in the mind, how so? Well, I was suffering from something called survivor's guilt, and I was also survive, or, uh, suffering from a lot of other things not being a good husband, not being a good uh, father. The SEAL team was the only thing in my mind. Given my abusive childhood, I had gotten to a point where I thought I could mm -hmm. totally protect myself and those around me. And the battle of the mind that I was losing was that false sense of being in control of my own destiny. Now, you were a sniper by profession. Did you, did you ever feel guilty about killing the bad guy? It's, it's funny you asked me that because when I came back, one of my overriding fears was that since I had done this so many times, oh, wow. that um, is there a special place in heaven or hell for me? And I actually spoke to my childhood pastor who um, assured me that I was gonna go to heaven. You know, um, I wasn't gonna go to hell just because I had been in war, but you'd be surprised. On my website, I get tons of um, posts, people telling me, of course you can't go to heaven. You know, you were in war. Ah, oh, well, that's just not biblical at all. He explained well, that to me, yeah. Well, you say you went from sort of being a rock star to rock bottom. How did, how did you turn it around? How did you turn your life around? Well, I had to do a few things. First of all, I had to admit I had a problem. The problem being survivor's guilt, um, and then later on, about what alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And the big thing um, is just not blame everybody else for my problems. And I went through a phase where I was shaking my fist at God, where I was literally angry. Mm -hmm. At God, you know, why did you let this happen to me? So I had to realize that when I was in that dark place, the light hadn't moved away from me. I had moved away from the light. So after two failed marriages, uh, you really thought you would never find love again. And then uh, something happened, a miracle happened. God sent somebody very special into your life. Tell us about that. Right. Uh, my one of my biggest miracles was a blind date with a feisty little redhead. So um, <laughs> Debbie came into my life and um, convinced me of one thing and basically that my best days weren't behind me. Mm -hmm. There was things I could do uh, on in my life that would, uh, would still be just as um, you know rewarding as being a SEAL Team 6 sniper. And to that point, I thought all my good days were behind me. I would never be at the top of my game again. And she's the one that taught me into being a chiropractor. Did, uh, how was your relationship with the Lord at that time? Did well, well, at that point, I'd started coming back from the dark place we're talking about. I'd had a couple of conversations with some important people um, in my life. My childhood pastor, Ron Wilcox, is the one that sat down and explained to me, hey, basically, if you want to look at it this way, David was a sniper when he killed Goliath. So that was a good analogy. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so um, um, that uh, had gotten me softened up a little bit. I'd been into some counseling. And uh, with Debbie seeing the way she was and her peaceful spirit and her relationship with God, that, that just made it even easier for me 
to get back on the right track. How is your leg today? Because I'm reading this book and I'm thinking, you know, this is the, the it was horrible the way you described it in, right. the, in the recovery. How is your leg today? It's good. Um, I see patients every week and sometimes they notice a little limp going from room to room. But, you know, I'm so blessed just to be here and to still be alive and have my family and my patients and Thank God, my, my leg still. So on the days I have that little bit of pain, it's it's no big deal. So I'm, Debbie's the one who talked you into being a chiropractor because you were so enthralled by what was happening to your your own recovery. That's your, right. Um, when you come back in the military, we'll give you all the drugs you need, all the surgeries you need. But I went to a chiropractor when I was a police officer in South Florida, and um, after seeing a chiropractor two or three times, I was pain free. And the big thing, sleeping through the night for the first time in eight years. Mm. You know, it's interesting to me, in the book you talk about uh, a little boy there in Mogadishu, a 14 year old, who had a similar injury, although he had lost his leg, and you were able to take care of him. And then ironically, you ended up having, getting injured almost in the exact same place. He was very special to you. Tell us about that. Well, there's a little boy that was next door to, the, uh, to our safe house, and um, I found him by uh, smelling you know, the necrotic tissue and decided to help him out. And it, it is kind of weird, same leg, um, just a couple inches difference. And um, that let me know that, hey, you know, I do love people. And believe it or not, the reason people become Navy SEALs is for love of God and country. Right. So to be able to have a job now where I can still love God and country and help people, as corny as it may sound, that's that's the greatest gift there is, being able to help other people. Yeah, do you ever miss those days though? Uh in the battle? Oh, well, my <laughs> wife's going to kill me for saying this, but yeah, there there used to be a lot of days when I um, really, really missed it. The day Osama bin Laden was killed. I remember oh, yeah. prancing around the um, living room wanting to gear up and my wife's finally <laughs> just like, sit down, you know, relax. But um, my days now are spent more being blessed and realizing the blessings I have instead of wishing for the past. Right. Well, there are different kind of warriors. I guess once a warrior, always a warrior. But uh, anyway, the book is fascinating. There's so much more to Howard's story. And you can read it all in his new book called The Last Rescue. It's available wherever books are sold. Howard, thanks so much for being with us today. We so thank appreciate you, it. And thank you also for your service to our country. My God pleasure. bless you. Thanks.